Having a Milky Way calendar makes life much easier when you're planning your Milky Way images. As you know, planning is fundamental in Milky Way photography, and for that reason, we create every year different Milky Way charts where you can see at a glance the best days of the year to shoot the Milky Way in your location. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get and use the Milky Way calendar so you can plan incredible images of our galaxy for this year. To get started, the first thing you have to do is to download your Milky Way calendar. It is 100% free and you can get it in the link in the description, in the comments, or just googling capture the atlas milky way that way you'll get to a page where you'll see calendars for different regions on earth we create calendars for 20 different regions divided on latitude so you'll see calendars for for example five different regions in the u.s like west coast east coast south pacific northwest you'll also see calendars for europe like northern europe southern europe for the uk canada many places in the southern hemisphere like australia new zealand so it's like 100% sure that there will be a Milky Way calendar for you. If you see a Milky Way calendar for the location where you're living, it's really simple. Just hit download and you can start using it. If for example, you don't see any Milky Way calendar for that specific location, don't worry because you can still use one any of the other calendars. Here, the only thing you have to do is to check what is your latitude. So do like a simple Google search, type in your city, town, uh, village, wherever you live, and latitude on Google. They will tell you which is your exact latitude. And then in our list, you'll see the different latitudes of our calendars. Here, you just have to select which is the closest latitude to your location, and you'll be good to go. Um, there's no problem with the different time zones. Calendars are based on latitude, so the time zone doesn't matter. It will be the same time once you're in your location. Also, if the latitude varies like a few degrees, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe the Milky Way times will vary like a few minutes, but the best days are gonna be the same and you will still be able to use the Milky Way calendar perfectly. So now that you got your calendar, let's jump into the computer and I'm gonna show you very quickly how to use them. So here we have an example of our US uh, Southwest Milky Way calendar. And I'm gonna use this just to show you very quickly how to use the calendar. Uh, the calendars are pretty straightforward, so once you open it up, you will see different colors and each color is going to tell you which are the best days to photograph the Milky Way. So for example, if we look, all the colors marked in red are the best days to photograph the Milky Way. Then the colors marked in light blue are days where the Milky Way is visible for a short period of time, but those days are good to go. And then you'll have the dark blue days, uh, those days the Milky Way is not visible either because there's like a very bright moon or because the Milky Way is not visible at that time of year. So in those days, you should probably stay at home and that's the best way to check it out. Here you can see all the three colors and the only thing you have to do is just check which days are the best and plan your shootings for those days. Now, checking out the different information here, depending on the day, you will see different details and I'm gonna explain to you uh, all of them very quickly. So first of all, the date. As you see, uh, all the calendars have uh, marked every Saturday of the year. This is one of the most common questions we receive, why we are choosing every Saturday. Well, like, the reason is because uh, if we want to include like every single day of the year, like 365 days, the calendar will be huge. And the point of this calendar is to quickly check uh, which are the best dates. So as a rule of thumb, you can take whatever day you are choosing, and two days before, two days after, it's gonna be the same. So for example, if we go to the March uh, 26th, which is here on the left column, uh, this means that March uh, 26th, for example, is one of the best days to photograph the Milky Way. And that means that, for example, March 24th, March 25th, March 27th, and March 28th, all the four days are gonna be very, very good days to photograph the Milky Way. And you can apply this to any of the days in the Milky Way calendar. Once you know the dates, uh, the other information that we can check in this column is the moon. And this is one of the most important things when you're planning your images. On the left, you will see the moon illumination. So we consider any moon brightness about 30% is gonna be maybe too much to photograph the Milky Way. And we consider that factor when we're planning the best days. You also see the moon rise and moon set in case you need that information. Uh, when you see a plus one 
by the side of the time, that means that the moon is either rising or setting at the following day. Uh, after this, you have this sunrise and sunset. Uh, as you know, you can shoot a Milky Way at any time between sunset and sunrise. Uh, you don't even really need to check this out, but just in case you want to plan uh, your session, sunrises, sunsets, or any other thing. Later, we can go to the Milky Way column. This is the time when the Milky Way is visible at that specific latitude. Uh, but what I recommend checking more specifically, and this is the key thing, is the galactic center visibility. These calendars are prepared to shoot the Milky Way galactic core. And here you can check what time the, the core is to start being visible in the sky, what time the core is setting below the horizon, and then the total number of hours. So for example, if we check one of the best days of the year, uh, June 4th, here you will see that the core starts being visible at 9.51 p.m. and sets at 3.41 uh, p.m. So that means, for example, that you should be ready maybe 20 or 30 minutes before uh, the time, 9.30. That way you can be ready by the time you have uh, the Milky Way being visible. And checking this, you can also see uh, what time your session is ending. That way you can plan your Milky Way images, depending if you are shooting panoramas or any other composition. Lastly, we have another very, very useful uh, column for planning your Milky Way compositions, and that's the galactic center position. As you know, depending where you are in your location, in your latitude, the Milky Way is going to look very different from, and also depending on the time of year. So it can look like an arch over the horizon, it can look like a diagonal line, like a vertical line. There are different positions of the core in the sky. Here you can see how throughout the year, the core is gonna change. So for example, here in the US Southwest, as you see at the beginning of the year, like the first term, January, February, March, the Milky Way is going to create an arch. As you see, the arch uh, is gonna start maybe around 10 degrees and it's gonna set until maybe 35, 40 degrees. That means that the arch is gonna be rising and at that time of year, you can plan those compositions. We consider that you can shoot the arch until it's maybe 50, 60 degrees. Above that, it's gonna be very high in the sky and probably makes sense to shoot like a diagonal Milky Way or maybe like a vertical Milky Way. So during some times of the year, like for example, June or July, you have the chance to shoot both the arch and the vertical Milky Way in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, if you go, for example, at the end of the Milky Way season, like for example, September, October, the Milky Way is going to be almost vertical in the sky. So you can plan your compositions like that during that time of year. Here you will see sometimes uh, these markings, like for example, vertical 70, vertical minus 75. That simply means that the Milky Way is going to be visible at 70 degrees, so it's diagonal. It's going to reach a point of 90 degrees during the middle of the night and then it's gonna fall setting when it's like minus 75. So it's just like a simple guideline when you want to plan your compositions and you can quickly check it out to plan your images. As you see, using the calendar is pretty easy. We've been creating these calendars for many years and we've helped like thousands of photographers all over the world to plan their images. So I'm 100% sure that you're gonna find it very, very helpful. Don't forget to download your calendar for your location. You can do it in the link in the description, in the comments, or just googling capture the atlas Milky Way. Once you get it, you'll have like a full resolution that you can print it out or take with you in your smartphone or use it whenever you like. Also, you want to keep learning, I highly recommend to check my Milky Way course where I cover literally everything about Milky Way photography, like planning, composition, technique, post-processing, start tracking, tracking panoramas, just everything. So I will leave a link here as well in the description so you can check it out. And also, if you want to learn in the field, another good chance is to join us in our dedicated Milky Way astrophotography workshops. Uh, we're running workshops in some of the most beautiful national parks in the US, like Death Valley, Utah, where you can shoot all the worldly Milky Way images and hone your Milky Way photography skills. So I'll leave a link in the description, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the field. If you have any questions about our Milky Way calendars, or if you want us to create a calendar for your specific location, Please leave that in the comments below.